The time has come for Real Madrid. The Champions League is back and another potentially magical night awaits us. This time we face Borussia Mönchengladbach, but it's not just any Champions League night, it's a life or death. A game that could determine not just the future if we stay in the Champions League, but the actual future of the club. Whether Sidan could get sacked, whether it could affect the team morale for the rest of the season, and finally, how it could affect us economically. Guys, today we're going to be analyzing Borussia Mönchengladbach and also discussing every single potential outcome in this game, combined with the result between the Shakhtar and Inter game and how it could affect whether Real Madrid stays or leaves the Champions League. Let's get started. What's up guys? Welcome back to it. Merengue Cule. I hope y'all are having a wonderful day. Obviously, this is a game that all the Madridistas will, will be extremely nervous for and I can already feel the nerves starting to build up inside of me. But I feel like it's these games that Real Madrid lives for. It's these games that ugh, the, the team, just we know the team is going to rise up to the challenge or at least I hope they will. Um, they have shown us in the past this season that against the big teams and the big games, the team just gets this new um, this new motivation, this new energy and to confront these matches. However, let's let's go ahead and start discussing about this Borussia Mönchengladbach team, a team that has impressed everyone so far in the Champions League and everyone in the group. Um, guys, for those of you that didn't watch the reactions that we had to the group stage draw, Borussia Mönchengladbach, when, when, when the whole draw was made, was a team that I was not expecting much. And I will leave the link up here so you can go see what I actually said about them. However, obviously this team has surpassed all expectations and has probably been the most solid team in the group, okay? While you look at them in the Bundesliga, it is not that same consistent solid team. Um, I know we have a lot of Bundesliga fans that comment down below and let me know that they're obviously a very good team, which we are well, very well aware now. However, their results in the Bundesliga don't necessarily back that claim up as they are currently 7th place in the league and have shown a lot of inconsistencies beating top teams but then losing to other, other teams. Um, they lost 3-0 to the Dortmund at the beginning of the season. They, Like I said, they've beat other good teams. It's just a very inconsistent, like if you look at the results, it's literally a wave of uh, like ups and downs, ups and up and downs. So. Uh, they, they have shown a bit of inconsistencies. However, in the Champions League, they have shown us a side that has not the Germans have not fully seen this season yet. And they have proven that they can, one, almost beat Real Madrid, guys. I want to remind you all that in that first game, Monte Gladbach was actually up 2-0 to Real Madrid. And it happened, it was a magical five minutes from Real Madrid to finish out the game. That and they ended up scoring two goals to tie up the game. Meanwhile, we all know what they did to that Shakhtar team completely pulling down their pants and just bullying them, scoring 10 goals in two games and conceding zero goals. And then there's a the game against Inter where they tie the first one and then they actually did end up losing that second one. And that loss to Inter is what opened up so so much hope for Real Madrid, so many opportunities for us where we could even potentially finish first place in the group in a group where any single team in this group can finish anywhere. No one is done, and so I want to just take this opportunity to basically break down every possibility that can happen, every result, and how it could potentially affect Real Madrid. So, going into this game, we have Borussia Mönchengladbach in, number, in the first place of the group with 8 points. Below them is Shakhtar and Madrid with 7 points. However, Shakhtar is currently over Real Madrid because they have the head-to-head -head advantage since they did beat us both games. So that obviously plays against us big time. And then in that fourth place is Inter Milan with five points. But like I said, they're still in it. Okay, so obviously Inter will be playing Shakhtar. The first result we're going to discuss is if Real Madrid goes out there and gets the job done and they win, well then they have a very good opportunity of finishing first place in the group. And that is being that Shakhtar does not win their game, meaning that Inter ties it or wins it. So as long as Shakhtar doesn't get any points and Madrid wins their game, they get first place. Okay. But what happens if Madrid ties the game? So if Madrid ties the game, then now we have to, we depend on the other game results, okay? And so if Inter gets the job done and beat Shakhtar, then Madrid will not be worried about Shakhtar and thus will go through a second place with Borussia Mönchengladbach going in as first. And then in that scenario, Inter would go in um, uh, to the Europa League in third place. So basically Inter has to win has to win. However, if 
Real Madrid ties the game and Inter does not win, meaning they tie or they lose, then Real Madrid is done, like I already mentioned, because of that head-to-head -head to Shakhtar, in which we would end up losing and we would end up going to the Europa League. And then finally, I think it goes without saying, but if Real Madrid loses this game, then they are done. No matter what result happens out there, they will be done and out of the Champions League. And now, what about Real Madrid? What's the news with us? Good news. Good news for the most part. We have, we have a couple players that are back. Our captain, Sergio Ramos, finally returns, which is probably one of the biggest boosts for the team. We have seen how, how much the team has struggled in defense without, obviously, our best defender, but our, our best and our main leader in the, in the field. Um, so, obviously, uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach will definitely not be happy at the fact that Ramos gets the return when right when Ramos is going to play against them. Additionally, we have Dani Carvajal who returns from injury, and I will be discussing whether I think he's going to fit into the lineup, into, into the starting lineup, in just a couple minutes. Um, however, let's first go into the bad set of news. Number one is that Luka Jovic, who had come back from the international break, had tested positive for COVID and been out for uh, almost two and a half weeks now comes back, practices once, and out injured. This man, he, he's, just, he's just not meant to be for Real Madrid, just not meant to be. And on top of that, we have Martin Odegaard, who actually didn't play last game, and the likely reason for that is because he was, he was feeling something, and sure, it's been confirmed that he is actually injured, and that's actually a pretty big, pretty big loss for Real Madrid because I probably would have predicted him to start this game. However, now let's actually jump to what the starting lineup I think will be. And I'm going to differentiate this because I think what the lineup that I'm going to put out there is not what he's going to, is not what Zidane's going to throw out there. Zidane's probably going to throw out there some 4-3-3 that in my opinion is not going to be very good for us. However, I'm going to go for a 4-1-2-1-2 formation. So that's why I'm going for two strikers. And so right away in the defense, uh, well, Portoa and goal, of course, defense to start with the right back position. And no, I do not think Carvajal will be starting our match. He's missed uh, three plus weeks, and I don't think it would be very good for us to go out and just throw him right away. So Lucas Vazquez has actually been playing pretty good in defense for us and giving us a lot of offensive capability. So I'm going to keep him in the right back position. Center back spot is going to have to be the return of Sergio Ramos alongside Varane. Nacho has done a pretty good job, but I think Zidane will end up going for Varane. On the left back spot, no questions asked, we will be having Ferland Mendy. Center defensive mid, Casemiro will step up and then he will be escorted by Toni Cruz and Luka Modric. Like I said, I would have ended up putting Martin Odegaard at that center attacking mid, but because he is injured, he will be missing out. And you guys know, I will not be trusting Isco for this matchup. However, if Zidane were to throw him out there, I wouldn't be entirely pissed because Isco and three other center mids is more compatible. Isco and two other center mids is a no. However, I'm gonna actually end up going for Asensio at the center attacking mid. I've mentioned it before in other videos that I wanna see him play a more central role. I think he gets completely lost out, of, out there in the wings and we lose a lot of his, um, he loses a lot of his potential, which one of them is his shot and he has a pretty good vision. So I wanna put him at the center attacking mid. And then up top, one of them is for sure Karim Benzema who will have to play all 90 minutes of the game. And the other one will be Vinicius Jr. Vinicius Jr. getting a little bit more of a, um, uh, a role where he can probably drift out wide to use that pace on the striker, on the, not on the strikers, on the outside backs, on the center backs, kind of move around the field so he basically doesn't have to be pinned to that striker position. I don't know. I would like to see it. I don't think we've ever actually seen Vinicius Jr. as striker, and this may not necessarily be the best game to experiment, but I think that could be a very solid lineup for Real Madrid. However, if you actually ask me what Zidane will probably line up with, will be probably those same exact players except in the 4-3-3 position with Asensio at the right wing and Vinicius at the, at the left wing. I don't know, maybe we could permutate that formation as the game goes by. So yes, guys, I think that's gonna be our lineup. But really, all I ask for Real Madrid is go out there and give it your all. We know Real Madrid is a team that will fight till the end, and that's exactly what I wanna see. Borussia Mönchengladbach is a great team, but they are not better than Real Madrid. They are not better than this team. If we go line by line, our players are of great caliber. Yes, we have young players who still have a lot of room to grow, but they have a lot of potential. And I think if Real Madrid really goes out there completely focused, then they should have no problem getting the job done. So that is all I ask for them. It's going to be a tough match, but if it comes to the point that Real Madrid ends up losing, I just surely hope that Inter also beats Shakhtar and 
we do not go to the Europa League. I would rather just be done with the Champions League and with all the European competitions than be seen in the Europa League this season. So, with that being said, guys, you know what the next segment is, which is your score prediction. I don't have the Real Madrid jersey with me, but remember, there are leaderboards that there's a competition here, and whoever at the end of the season has the most predicted scoreboards will end up winning a home Real Madrid Karim Benzema jersey. So, guys, make sure you let me know down below what your prediction is for this video, and I think. I think Real Madrid is going to get it done. Something about me tells me that this is going to be a good night for us. We just have the boost of having beat Sevilla. I think morale is a little bit high. The team is feeling like, like they can do something. They found a new rhythm of play. They found that they don't necessarily have to press so high, but that they can sit back, win the ball, and then kind of counterattack the team. And that basically prevents the other team from getting so much space to attack Real Madrid, which is what, what, what we had been seeing in previous games. So guys, my actual score prediction will be a Real Madrid 2-0 victory. I think we're gonna get a goal in the first half and Real Madrid is gonna be able to really stay focused. We know if they stay focused that they can defend well. And then whenever Borussia Mönchengladbach is out there trying to get the tie, Real Madrid will get a counterattack and score that second goal. Guys, I'll be seeing y'all tomorrow. We're gonna be doing a live reaction, so make sure you tune back in to the account to check out that video it's going to be it's going to be an emotional day nonetheless whether we win whether we tie whether we lose it's going to be an emotional one it's going to be a great video to watch so i will be seeing y'all tomorrow for now i hope you'll have a wonderful day enjoy that barcelona against juventus game remember we're going to be posting the live reaction video in a couple of hours when that game goes happens and for now i don't have my real madrid jersey but we know real madrid is in our hearts so a la madrid